Billy Ocean, Love Song at number 11 on my fantasy playlist, September 6, 1986, up three from number 14. Billy Ocean, uh, his real name, Leslie Sebastian Charles. Starts singing when he was very young, and uh, God, he got a big break in the late 60s. He met a manager who got him... I don't know if it was a recording contract, but he recorded a song for the Pie record label in the late 60s. Billy, well, Le, I'll just call him Leslie Sebastian Charles. He was known then as Leslie Sebastian Charles. Pie Records. He recorded a double A single for Pie Records, Leslie Charles. It was a ballad backed up by a full orchestra, but it was not released by the record company. But Pie Records. The fact that he recorded for Pi Records, you got to understand, this was a big record company in England back in the 60s. Some of the who's who's of the, of the pop and the rock acts of the British pop and rock acts of the 60s were on the Pi record label, including Petula Clark. Status Quo recorded pictures of Matchstick Man for the Pi record label, 1968. Lonnie Dunnigan. The Searchers, Kings, Sandy Shaw. Sandy Shaw, she did a, an early version of There's Always Something to Remind Me, which was made huge and famous by Naked Eyes in the 80s, but she did an early version of that re record in 1964 for the Pie record label. But nothing there. Billy Ocean, he played in a couple of groups. In a, well, <laughs> I keep calling him Billy Ocean. He wasn't Billy Ocean back then. He was Leslie Sebastian Charles. Leslie Charles, he played in a couple of bands in the late 60s, early 70s. Shades of Midnight and Scorched Earth. And released some singles. But he released his first album in 1976. Oh, this gets really great, too. Billy Ocean, Love Really Hurts Without You, one of the most underrated records of the 70s that's forgotten here in America. It was one of the most passionate deliveries I've ever heard. I was like, man, this guy, he's wanting somebody really bad the way he's singing. He's singing his heart out. And, uh, well, by then, well, I'll get into that in just a minute. I'm jumping ahead of myself, but I'll just keep jumping ahead of myself. And the song only went to number 22 here in America. Spring of 1976. Very few people in the States remember that song, Love Really Hurts Without You. But the song went to number two in England. If you're watching this video in the UK and go back, way back to the day, if you take the time warp all the way back, you probably remember the song, Love Really Hurts Without You. And he released some more singles after that. He became Billy Ocean. He lived in a place, I don't know if it was an apartment complex or maybe it was a town or it was a part of, it was part of East London. Called, uh, it was called Ocean Estate. And Leslie Sebastian Charles took the name Billy Ocean from Ocean Estate. We get into the 80s, we get into Caribbean Queen and Boone. Well, he made it big. Transatlantic, huge. Billy Ocean, that's probably the first, his first really, that was his first really big hit here in the States. That was probably the first time when many Americans were introduced to Billy Ocean. It was in 1984. And uh, suddenly was a big hit for him. I'm trying to remember another one that he did. I can't remember it off the top of my head. There were puppets in the video. I thought the video was a genius. Lover Boy, yes. Late 84, early 1985. Love Song. Song, Love Song from the same album. There were three hit songs off that album. There'll be sad songs to make you cry, along with When the Going Gets Tough, The Tough Gets Going. And Love Song at number 11. Went to number 10 on Billboard's Hot 100, Love Song did and uh, went to number five on the adult contemporary charts. Billy Ocean was like Lionel Richie, like Phil Collins, like Will Madonna, like Michael Jackson. Billy Ocean 
was a mass appeal artist. The guy crossed over to dance, to pop, to R&B, to adult contemporary. Everything is set for country. What more can you ask for when you have that appeal? But only lasted in the 80s, though. By the 90s, he started to taper off a little bit as far as popularity was concerned. Uh, when the going gets tough, the tough gets going. Got some chart stats on the record. Went to number one in England. Number two here in the States. But let's get back to Love Song at number 11 on my fancy playlist. Up three from 14. Fancy playlist is September 6, 1986.